Keynote A26 uh, is a prospective randomized phase 3 trial of uh, pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy with or without bevacizumab in patients with persistent, recurrent uh, or metastatic cervical cancer. So we know that these patients with, uh, with persistent, recurrent metastatic cervical cancer are treated with chemotherapy, usually platinum and paclitaxel with or without bevacizumab. Uh, but in recent years, we had information that uh, anti-PD-1 uh, and anti-PD-1 uh, drugs may uh, show efficacy, uh, even as monotherapy in this disease. So with this trial, we aim to demonstrate whether the addition of pembrolizumab to the standard of care frontline treatment could improve efficacy and also uh, could have a manageable uh, safety profile. So we enroll uh, 617 patients in this trial from uh, uh, 2018 and, to, and 2020, and uh, these patients were randomized to receive um, pembrolizumab, um, 200 milligrams uh, IV, uh, Q3 weeks for up to 35 cycles, or matching placebo. And also patients receive uh, uh, the standard dose of paclitaxel and uh, the investigator choice of cisplatin or carboplatin. And at the discretion of the investigator, they could also receive bevacizumab. So the use of bevacizumab was not randomized, actually. It was left uh, at the discretion of the investigator and was based on possible contraindication that um, patients may have for the use of bevacizumab. The statistical design, we wanted to demonstrate uh, the superiority of uh, adding pembrolizumab to chemotherapy uh, for progression-free and overall survival. These were the two co-primary endpoints, overall survival and progression-free survival. And uh, these were sequentially tested in three different populations according to uh, PDL1 expression. So we had the first population to be tested was um, the population with a PDL1 a CPS score of one or more, then the all camer population, and finally the CPS 10 or more population. And, um, and we, um, the overall alpha was, was strictly controlled at one sided 2.5%. Uh, for all uh, primary hypotheses and all uh, plan analysis. And the data I presented and we published actually are related to the first interim analysis, which uh, had to occur when approximately 370 events uh, that uh, were, uh, had occurred and at which time all primary uh, hypotheses were to be tested. So this study uh, showed quite clearly that a progression-free survival was improved significantly in all populations, all primary analysis populations. So the CPS 1 and more, the all camer, and the CPS 10 or more population. And uh, what we see is that the hazard ratio ranges from 0.65 to 0.62 according to the different uh, level of expression of PDL1. And uh, uh, the median progression free survival for the PEMBRO arm was about 10.4 months, and for the control was around eight months. But most, uh, most important is, of course, um, the, the result of overall survival, because we demonstrated a significant improvement in overall survival in all primary analysis population. So in the CPS 1 or more, and also in the all camer and in the CPS 10 or more. Uh, in the CPS uh, one or more population, the median progression free survival was not reached, uh, while it was around 16.3 months in the control arm, and, and similarly it was not reached in the CPS 10 or more population. Now, if we look at the all camera and we look at the median overall survival for this population, you see with pembrolizumab, um, the median uh, was uh, 24.4 months, and in the control was 16.4 months, so uh, eight months uh, improvement in the median overall survival for this population, which is quite good uh, if you, you know, uh, if you know what, uh, what, what is the outcome usually for these patients <clears throat> with a, 
a standard treatment. Um, then the other thing I want to say is that we also, uh, there was an exploratory analysis regarding quality of life, and, uh, and specifically we look at time to deterioration, and uh, we demonstrated also there uh, a significant improvement uh, in, uh, in time to deterioration uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.75 also for this endpoint. And finally, about um, safety profile, um, I think the safety profile was quite manageable. Um, there was slightly uh, a numerical uh, higher number of uh, grade three and serious adverse events with Pembro, but, but these patients also remain on treatment for a longer period of time. The uh, adverse events leading to um, discontinuation were similar in the two arms. Uh, and if we look at the adver adverse events leading to deaths, um, actually also these were quite similar in the two uh, arms. And there were two deaths which were attributed to uh, treatment in the Pembro arm. One was a case of uh, autoimmune encephalitis and the other was a bowel perforation, probably related to bevacizumab. Um, the most common side effects are really was, were, were the typical anemia, fatigue, and actually there was no side effects which was uh, more represented in the PEMBRO arm compared to the control. And the most frequent uh, um, immune-related side effects were uh, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, but uh, both of them were of grade one and two uh, severity. So I think this trial is uh, very important because um, it established a new standard of care for the treatment of patients with persistent recurrent or metastatic cervical cancer. I think this uh, should be the new standard of care, carboplatin, pachytaxel, and pembrolizumab uh, with or without bevacizumab.